The battle for the future of electric heavy-duty trucks has begun. The 2024 ACT Expo featured a laundry list of battery electric, hydrogen fuel cell, and efficiency improvements to the traditional diesel truck engines on the road. But I want to focus on two particular trucks squaring off. Tesla's semi-truck, the American long-haul champion, and the Challenger from Windrose Technology. I got to drive in both of them. Let me tell you how they compare. The Tesla Semi looks great, even better in person. Sleek, futuristic, aerodynamic, reportedly with a drag coefficient of 0.36, which compared to other diesel semi-trucks, really helps to deliver those extra miles. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Windrose looks like the Tesla Semi. We've heard this complaint before. Chinese manufacturers copying Western designs. Let's face it, they just don't make them like the 1957 Chevy. Except this is a 1957 Ford, and this is a 57 Chevy. You can also argue that EVs are gravitating towards a similar design to improve aerodynamics. The wind doesn't give style points. It rewards vehicles for a sleek design. Windrose claims a significantly lower drag coefficient than the Tesla. Visually, the main difference is the use of digital side view mirrors. China allows this, Europe allows this. The cameras still need to be positioned wide on arms to get a good view of the road, but they are thin and far more aerodynamic than Tesla's mirrors, which are a reflective glass design because US laws do not yet allow for cameras, but we're thinking about it. The two trucks are not a cab over design. They are a more cab forward design though than the traditional long nose favored on diesel trucks in the US. The doors are integrated into the body in a similar way and both have just one hilariously large wiper blade. Both have a small lower air intake in the front. Battery electrics still need to have a cooling system for the batteries, the power conversion modules, and the electric motors. Plus, there is heating and cooling for the driver, but obviously the air intake is smaller because they are vastly more efficient than diesel trucks. Both trucks position the driver in the middle of the cab. For big, big trucks like this, I think sitting in the middle just makes more sense. It's a good idea. It also allows the same model to be sold in both left-hand drive and right-hand drive markets. Both have information displays to the left and to the right of the driver. Note that Tesla does show digital side mirror views on the displays, even though legally they're still required to have those glass mirrors. If the laws in the US do change, they could do a quick revision. Windrose has displays dedicated to those side view mirrors and show multiple views on all the displays. It also has a small display in front of the driver. Tesla Semi is a day cab with one jump seat for a passenger. They said that a sleeper cab could be offered in the future, maybe. Windrose also has a seat for a passenger, but there's more room and the seat can fold to create a bed. It's not as plush as the sleeper cabs you see on long haul trucks in the US though. They came to this show in part to get some feedback on various features, including the interior, to see what customers were looking for. So if they do bring this truck to the US, the interior may be different. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of trucking. Tesla is a tri-motor system. One electric motor is the efficiency motor that continuously operates. The other two motors engage only for acceleration. Windrose is a quad motor system. Now that does not mean that there's a motor at each wheel. There are two motors on each of the solid axles, one motor mounted on the front of the E-axle and the second on the rear of the E-axle. I confirmed this by crawling around and underneath the truck. Although later on they showed me these awesome model trucks that have amazing levels of details. And yes, they confirmed that what you see on the toy is very accurate. Tesla does not publish specs for many of its products, but reports put the Windrose power output a little bit higher. Tesla has a larger battery for more range, but Windrose offers much more than other competitors. For all semis, they do not publish range estimates to a particular test schedule. Unlike light duty vehicles, 
they're not required to certify with the EPA or to WLTP standards. Essentially, it's an agreement between the truck manufacturer and the customer. Both also claim charging in the megawatt range. Tesla gave a peek into their operations at PepsiCo, showing the semi charging up to 650 kilowatts on a charger rated at 750. And their boss said that they'll offer 1,000 or megawatt charging when they build out their infrastructure. That is, if there's anyone left to build it out. Currently, the Tesla Semi uses an earlier plug design for megawatt charging, not the final triangular design, although speculation is that they will eventually switch. Windrose in China partnered with Borg Warner on charging hardware to juice it up quickly, but I've yet to see 1,000 kilowatt charging demonstrated. The truck on display, interestingly, has GBT socket on the left side and on the right side, ta-da, CCS for America. But, you know, they probably should offer MCS on one side and CCS on the other, or Tesla, Nax, J3400 plug on the other side. Again, this is what they're here for, to learn what customers want. Windrose has much higher gross vehicle weight capacity because that's allowed in China. In the US, the combined weight is more restricted. So can Tesla handle more than its official rating? We don't know. We just know what the legal limits allow in the US. Windrose has tested at that higher weight capacity because they know people are going to load them up. We've seen videos of the Tesla pulling maximum loads up steep grades. And Windrose also has successfully completed some very demanding tests. There's no MSRP for either truck. Being made in the US with a larger battery, you can expect the Tesla to cost more. Windrose should cost less. It's built in China by JAC Motors. The US imposes a tariff on commercial trucks from China. And as I'm making this video, it's not clear if the new Higher restrictions on EVs apply to heavy-duty commercial trucks as well. Most semi-trucks on the road in the U.S. are made in America, so it's very questionable if Windrose could make a business case unless they assemble here. BYD, for example, they sell trucks and buses in the U.S. with final assembly in California. Maybe that's Windrose's plan, too. Why else would they come to a trade show in America unless they were testing the waters to see how much demand there was for their Tesla alternative. Or maybe they're just looking for an excuse to visit Vegas. I'm definitely glad they came. I had fun. Hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching.